Claire is probably finishing up the other one, so she'll be here in a second. Yep. Hi, Claire. Hey, Alan and Newton, how are you? Good, how are you? Very well, very well. You must be enjoying this conference. It's in your time zone. It's in my time zone and uh, on topics that I'm uh, uh, really interested <laughs> and excited in. Um, a bit tougher for you. Um, although there's always the on-demand option. Yeah, yeah. I have to wait a week, so it's uh, you know not quite as current, but um, right. definitely. How, how are you going? Nice to meet you, Newton. Nice to meet you too, Claire. I'm I'm doing well. Excellent. Um, so we're um, we'll kick off in a minute. We'll just wait and see if um, some other people are going to join. Um, Alan, you've you've done these before, I think, haven't you? Um, you're an old hand. I am, uh, Newton. I think this is this your is this your first or? This is my first API days. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, no, that's great. And uh, um, we'd certainly of the sessions that I've been in so far. We've had plenty of uh, plenty of contribution and questions from the chat. So um, I'm quietly confident. Of course, if I say that, yeah. <laughs> it'll be radio silence. But I'm right. quite confident that we um, uh, will get uh, get contribution from the floor. Um, and I'm sure people will be excited to hear about your um, your views on APIs beyond REST. I can see that we're we're pretty spot on. Um, 2.45 our time. So um, so let's welcome um, uh, those who are uh, uh, have joined us on the audience. Um, my name is Claire Barrett at APIs First. I describe myself as someone who makes strategy happen and I'm delighted to have the opportunity today um, to have Alan Glickenhaus and Newton Piccioni. 
make sure I pronounce it correctly. Yep. <laughs> Welcome from IBM. Um, IBM are uh, um, goal sponsors. They've been uh, um, consistent and uh, long-term sponsors and partners for API Days, uh, and their sponsorship makes it um, these programs available to the community and now a global community. And as we as we're in this virtual virtual world, um, so uh, just for those who haven't joined one of these roundtables before, uh, this is not a workshop. It's not a presentation. Uh, it's a, it's a conversation. Um, and uh, you as our audience are part of that conversation. You, you can be as bold if you want to um, share video and audio um, with us if, if you like, but for many that, in fact, as the person that was contributing to online chat pointed out to me yesterday, being in New Zealand at two o'clock in the morning wasn't going to probably be <laughs> the most sensible way of joining in um, by, by video and audio, but um, uh, anybody can join in via the online chat. We look forward to getting your questions. Um, and I might just uh, kick off um, Alan Newton, maybe quickly introduce yourselves and, and talk, to, to, talk to us about what you want to share on APIs Beyond REST. Sure, I guess I'll, I'll go first. Go so on. I'm Alan Glickenhaus. I'm uh, a, a, along with Newton on the API Connect offering management team, uh, our API management product. But my role is a little different. I, I'm outward facing to the API community. I'm a digital transformation strategist and API Connect uh, business strategy, API business strategist. So I work with customers around the world on how APIs and how you can execute a digital transformation uh, and be successful. Right, and we always love your and, uh, contribution. Thank you, Newton. Welcome to API Days for your first time. Yes, my first time at API Days. Um, happy to be here. I'm excited for it. Um, it's going to be a fun roundtable. Um, I'm Newton Piconi. I'm uh, on the API Connect um, and Data Power Gateways team, uh, offering team, um, uh, PM. Um, uh, I mean, we're, we're all uh, building the product, leading the vision, um, but my primary focus is on our, our uh, software as a service um, cloud offerings um, that we provide. Um, and uh, just excited to talk about some of the uh, beyond rest topics that we have, have going on. Um, and some of the future things that we're looking to do with the product. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, uh, maybe, um, you know, you've titled the topic APIs Beyond REST. Um, uh, what, what, what do you mean by some of the technologies uh, beyond that? Um, Alan, so yeah, I'll start because Newton's the smarter guy. So he'll, he'll, he'll add to whatever I, uh, whatever I leave out here. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, some of these things have happened for a, a long time from the beginning uh, of discussing about APIs, um, all, you know, there's always REST, but in our case and in many other vendors' case, uh, SOAP was already a, another, um, you know, option for, for an API. Uh, more recently, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of discussion about GraphQL, uh, and that's, you know, a very hot topic at API Days and, and, and had thousands of sessions probably over the last couple of years. But more recently, events, um, asynchronous APIs, web sockets, um, even files, uh, people are talking about that as as events. Uh, Newton, did I miss any? I probably there's a bunch more. Um, no, I mean you, you nailed them. Um, the the big ones that we're that we're looking at um, now, focusing deeply on are the GraphQL and the the events. Um, so working with uh, with Kafka and just kind of uh, looking at um, like the next evolution of um, APIs and um, and uh, kind of starting to look at expanding the breadth of what we're able to support um, with with our with our product and um, and different uh, use cases that we're able to um, kind of expand um, under under our breadth. Um, no, that's 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 great. Um, and, uh, and and what do you think, Alan, like Alan? What what are you seeing that's kind of behind some of these trends in terms of? Uh, um, th this broader adoption and broader experimentation and or, you know, take up of all of these these different yeah, ways of well, yeah, I, I, right. I think, um, you know, people have been very excited about APIs. I mean, of course, this is, uh, you know, they're having whole conferences about this nowadays, right? So, so this is obviously a very hot topic and it has been for many years. Um, and, and so REST has been very successful, but people are now saying, you know, sometimes a request response paradigm is not the only one I want. And, and, and so, uh, what other kinds of models do I need? And, and rather than trying to force fit everything into REST, 
maybe we can take advantage of some of these other capabilities and and and, and you know have the same success that we've had with rest in in these other areas so i think that's that's what i'm seeing is really driving this i mean each one of the ones we mentioned probably has its own reason for why people are are looking at it you know graphql to give more flexibility on what's returned to you and events from a you know kind of more um push out instead of request kind of a, a, a thing. So, so each one of them could have its own reason for, for doing it. Um, but, but you know, the rest, the API community would like to take advantage of these other models. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, um, Newton, could you elaborate for us perhaps what you're seeing, whether there's a difference in certain industries or certain types of size or uh, size of company or, or profile of developer community that, you know, that, that seems to be you know, further ahead or, um, you know, leading the charge in this in this space? What what are your observations? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, just, just adding on what, what Alan was saying, it's really coming down to, um, like, the amount of data that's available and access to data um, that applications and, and end consumers are expecting. Um, and uh, like Alan was saying, sometimes um, just the, the request response doesn't exactly cut it for every type of application, every type of data that needs to be accessed. Um, and for example, like um, data pushed to you regularly um, is 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 the uh, um, for example, like um, in uh, the transportation industry um, with airlines uh, who are building out mobile applications. Um, for the check-in experience, you you want that request response where it's kind of a, a certain amount of time where you're um, sending data and getting data back um, via this application from an end user. Um, but um, on the flip side of it, after that that uh, after that person has logged into their uh, has has checked into their um, their flight uh, and they're kind of at the airport waiting to board, um, and um, you don't want their application always pinging, asking for responses, looking for um, delay notices or weather delays or anything like that. Um, you want something like uh, like um, Kafka or, or an event-driven architecture, um, just ready to, as soon as that delay comes in, to send that data um, for, for multiple reasons of, of saving on, um, on infrastructure, um, saving on, on all these different kinds of, uh, these, these for different reasons of why you would want an architecture like that. But, that, that's an example of an industry of of a, like a use case that that we're seeing um, mm -hmm. and kind of broadening out the the uh, the scope of these um, these different types of APIs. What is this flight thing you mentioned? I I, I don't remember uh, experiencing that lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're someone, Alan, who's uh, yeah. whose life um, beyond airports would have. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting. Yeah, I miss you letters from uh, from all the airlines. <laughs> yeah. And has anybody been using um, uh, Mural as a um, a workshop collaboration tool? Because the particular sound that they've chosen for the end of the timer. Is the same um, sound that you that you hear at the airport when you're as uh, last boarding call. Oh. And it's, it's really evocative. It's like everybody goes oh, that one. Like you know, suddenly they see themselves back either in the panic of trying to get on a flight or um, yeah. some excitement about going on holiday. These these things yeah. we've forgotten that come back. Who would have thought? Um, yeah. I, I might actually just, Alan, um, in, in invite you to comment on. Uh, looks like we may have temporarily lost Newton. Um, uh, but whether you've got thoughts, so this was actually um, one of our um, audience uh, put this question up as part of the registration. And they asked um, about what your thoughts were on managing REST and non-REST APIs cohesively. Um, maybe now Newton's back, you might want to. There you go. Okay. Oh, you, put, you popped it out there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's part of why we want to do this as APIs, right? Um, you, you don't want to have to handle each one of these different capabilities in a totally different ways. And, and so if we can make um, the different um, new capabilities available to you to consume in a developer portal and, and secure in an API gateway, um, then it becomes like the other you know, uh, APIs that, that have gone before. And I don't have to learn a whole new mechanism for um, you know, dealing with each one of these others in a, in a totally different way, right? So, so as a consumer who's building an app uh, application, um, you know, um, you you can still go to the developer portal and and, and grab the uh, flight delay event, you know, kind of thing. Or you know, if you from a security perspective want to um, 
you know, uh, secure it the same way, right? It's all done through the same um, infrastructure, right? So I think that's that's the key. Do you have anything at the new? Oops. No, that, that was that was exactly right, Alan. And I mean, just bringing it back to I gave before um, of that mobile. Um, imagine the fret like the the frustrations and the time that it takes to um, node two different systems for your uh, REST APIs and your events. Um, having to go back and forth between those two constantly um, just adds to the time that it takes to build that application. Um, whereas if you bring it all cohesively into one system, you have API, uh, you have one API management solution. Um, you can go just to that one place. You can access all of the different endpoints that you want. I mean, we keep talking about REST and and events, but imagine your GraphQL APIs are there too, and um, and kind of all of those web sockets, all those different uh, types of endpoints, um, those different APIs are all in one portal that you know that you are comfortable navigating, and you can you can test and get all the documentation and everything you need from there, um, and it just speeds up the time that it takes for you to build both that check-in experience um, and also that flight delay um, experience and the backend architecture for for making that all work. Yeah. Well, thank you, Newton. Um, actually, we got. Question from Cheaton on the um, uh, on the chat there about well, does this mean that SOAP API is now totally obsolete? What's uh... yeah? I, I, um, yeah I'll, I'll go first again. Newton, I'm going to let you go first next time. So uh, um, the the um, yeah, no, I, it's not obsolete. Uh, I mean, you know, this is the IT industry. Nothing ever goes away, right? We we uh, you know we still run COBOL some places, right? So uh, so um, you know, SOAP was previously the dominant uh, interface. And, and, and so for many businesses, they've already exposed SOAP interfaces to other businesses and they've you know, consumed them, right? So, so you know, treating them now as APIs and again, securing them in the same way and potentially making them available in the developer portal for new releases is, is you know, can be an ongoing way to how to deal with this other business that's already dealing with you in a SOAP uh, mechanism. Now, what most businesses are doing is not creating more SOAP, um, in, in the sense of exposing, they're taking the SOAP interfaces they have and maybe exposing them uh, as REST, you know, that, that we transform to SOAP calls on the back end um, to handle that um, and making the REST available to any new consumers because it's easier to deal with than, than, than the SOAP. But, uh, but SOAP is not going away. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be there for a long time. Well, that's good to um... Uh, good to hear. And actually, I'll tell you what, Newton, I'm going to give you the next question. <laughs> um, because uh, so this is a bit of a blend of a couple of things that um, our audience uh, um, contributed to at their registration. Um, they were they were interested about issues with current REST methods. Um, but actually, then, what would you look for? Well, how would you know that you've got a kind of an API legacy situation or, or not, um, if you're kind of looking to either, you know, move away from or, or making some choices about other options um, from your uh, traditional maybe REST model, et cetera. Um, have, what would you? What would be the signs of uh, uh, in your mind of you know time to retool or rethink? Yeah, um, that's. I mean, it's a great question, and I, I think that it comes down to um, what, um, like, what what is the end goal of what you're trying to build, um, and how like what is the uh the best way for for doing that and as alan said like we're not making things obsolete here um we're adding breadth to what is available and the use cases that can be um that can be served that we can um, supply um so just because there are new things coming out around graphql and events doesn't mean rest apis or soap apis are going to go obsolete and no one's going to use them anymore um it's just expanding the number of of use cases that um that uh, that we're able to support, um, and that that um, that you're able to kind of um, use in different ways. Um, so I'd say that there's probably um, there's there's like specific ways that you would want to use the different. I wouldn't say specific ways. There, there's there are places where the different types of APIs thrive and they work. Um, so as I was saying, like keep going back to my same example of the airline um, mobile application. Um, if you wanted to use a REST API to do that flight delay um, notification, you can. Um, the problem, the, the, the reason why events are, are more 
um, are, are more beneficial than REST APIs in that case is because if you're using REST, you have to continually be sending requests and getting those response back and not every flight's delayed. So all like if you're sending them every two minutes, every five minutes, um, those requests are all uh, taxing on your backend systems um, and you're coming back with, with no responses. Um, so yes, it could still be used, but is it the best way? Is it the best way to optimize the way that you're building this application, um, especially a mobile application? Uh, probably not. And looking at other technologies that can do something more efficiently, um, like uh, like an event where it just sends, when it has something to send, it sends it away without having to um, have that request first, um, then, then uh, being aware and, and understanding the different technologies that can allow allow for that um, is definitely important. Coming back to you know thinking about the the user experience, the customer experience, you know the the, the what problem are you trying to solve for? Um, which doesn't go back go away. It's just new ways of of of, of, of perhaps thinking about about solving it. Um, uh, I mean, do you um, uh, one of the the other things um, uh, is Alan? If all of these technologies are APIs. Um, and yet, you know, they're clearly so very different, requiring different skills, different, you know, I'm guessing tooling, um, approaches, et cetera. What, what, what's common about them? Yeah. <laughs> um, as opposed yeah. to like kind of, you know, what's, what's an API? First, yeah. um, you know, like, yeah, that's, I, I, you know, I said, what's an API? If, if an, what, what is, is, is an API everything, right? You know, uh, it's all there, right? Um, so, so, you know, I, I think when I think about API, um, you know, I, I think about, the consumer of the API. What 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 did you know? REST existed before we talked about these whole API economy. It's been around for much longer than that, and 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 so before that, and, and you know, and so on. So so what was an API? What what made things? You know, what what made this whole API economy and API you know world start to take off? And the answer is, uh, it, it's about consumption. Uh, it, it's not it's not about the technology itself. It's about driving the consumption of these assets, and and, and so if we can um, treat these as very simple to consume assets, which is what this whole API economy was about, then then all of these things can become APIs. If if we fail on that, then then they're bad APIs, right? You know, but and hopefully we we, we do better on our next try. But but you know the the goal of of having all these different capabilities. Would be that we can consume all of them in a very simple to consume form, even though many of them have existed before we called them APIs. And and similarly, we want to secure them, um, you know, and, and make sure that that that's handled in the right way. So so it's this consistency uh, uh, on the on the consumer side of being able to to use these things in in a way that's that's easy. That's I think uh, my my basic um, you know way I think about it. What about you, Newton? I mean, often this comes down to the, uh, how do you explain what an API is to somebody who's not in the industry? <laughs> Which is always like, I don't, you know, or, or a family member or yeah. you know, a friend or something that's, uh, that, you know, someone from a different different era. Um, uh, it, it, have you, had, do you have a view, Newton, yourself for, um, on this? Can you hear us okay? Doesn't look like he's hearing us. Newton, can you hear us? He's hearing us. We can see him. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I can oh, okay. hear you, Alan. Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry, Claire. Maybe you repeat your question. Oh, we were just um, we were talking a little bit more philosophically, if you like, about you know how is it? What... Sorry, Claire, I cannot. I tell you what, oh. I fit in here. When can you hear me, but not Claire? Is that? Uh... I yeah. I can hear you loud and clear. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat the question. So the question is, uh, and, you know, I, I answered about, you know, my thoughts on what makes something an API. Um, Claire was asking, like, you know, what are your thoughts? Do you, how do you explain what an API is to your family members? Uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think you nailed it on the head there, uh, Alan. It's, it's all about consumption and connection to backend systems. Um, so, I mean, I, I like to think of APIs as the um, like the the telephone wires of the internet, right? Um, they're how we connect uh, front end applications to back end systems of record, um, and, and vice versa, and how we have all that communication happening um, within our applications, whether from our applications to other applications into the web and and other uh, kind of back end systems and things. So um, 
when it when it comes down to uh, APIs and what are they, it's really access to data, access to information, and the, and these being the you know the the common characteristics, um, regardless of you know what they're written in and and you know in terms of how they're experienced from a consumer user perspective, um, which is which is that thread. So um, uh, so we we it would be fair to conclude that you know rest is not going away anytime soon. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you, you still can't hear Claire. Is that true? That's amazing. Yeah, I still. I, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, so rest is yeah, rest is not going. I'll have to translate between you two. This is interesting. It's funny, like an API, <laughs> isn't it? You're yeah. the uh, you're the face that everyone can see. I'm the API, right? So you call <laughs> me, and I'll. If anybody is contributing the online, I don't know what people can hear in the online chat. Whether uh, yeah. uh, importantly, it's our audience. Actually, we should be wearing right. Very they can hear. Um, and uh, uh, we've we've probably we've got time for um, maybe one more question. I don't know, um, Cheaton. I, I, did I check that we could? Oh, well, thank you for <laughs> and Anthony for saying that you can hear everybody. So, um, uh, yep, just uh, interesting experiences for um, for Newton. Um, so, um, uh, 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 I just uh, maybe if I'd kind of sum up in terms of some of these uh, APIs beyond REST. And uh, um, uh, the fact that language and terminology uh, can often confuse, <laughs> um, and often the audiences that we're talking about in terms of uh, options um, uh, beyond REST uh, can can maybe be in interpreted differently. Even we were talking about event driven. We we're talking about like they can mean many things to many people. Uh, are there are there guidelines from an IBM perspective um, uh, or a personal perspective that you would recommend to people help navigate? you know, through the terminology in this space so that as they're evaluating and thinking about um, what options they could choose and how to perhaps support and justify that to their team members or, you know, other people who are contributing to investment around what they do um, that can help them get really crisp in this space. So I don't know if Newton, you heard any of that. Um, no? Okay. No? Oh. I, I, it was, the question was about terminology and how to, um, uh, how to, um, explain to our audience uh, about, um, you know, how should they adopt uh, this new beyond rest kind of kind of thinking. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw a couple of things out there and then feel free to, to add to it. Uh, I, I mean, I think Newton kind of hit it on, on the head, which is what's the right model for what you're trying to do. And, and, and you know, we, we often have a technology that is brought out in, in, into the world that gets very hot and, and people start to use it and they think it's the, the cure for everything. And, and, and then you realize, well, it's not the cure for everything. It does these things really well and it doesn't do these others. Um, you know, Gartner has a, a, a thing that they uh, prepare called the hype cycle, which is really funny to you know talk about that shows this peak of, you know, uh, unrealistic expectations and then the trough of disillusionment and, all kinds of things like that, and, you know, and, and you know, APIs are kind of coming out of that trough of disillusionment that doesn't do everything for everybody, right? And and the the what the recognition is that now we've got these other models that we can add to our toolkit, and and the more tools you have in the toolkit, the better you are at, at doing things in a, in the best way possible. So um, so I, my suggestion is um, think about what you're trying to accomplish first figure out what model fits best and, and, and then, you know, look for the tool that, that does that model as opposed to I have a, I have a tool, let's see where I can use it. Right. So, um, so, so that's, that's my thinking. Great. Um, thank you. Alan. Yeah. Alan, that's awesome. And like, I'll add to that just by saying that I, I completely understand that it's hard to stay up to date on all of the technologies, all the tools um, that are out there that could be used. Um, so, I mean, I, I just echo what you were saying, Alan, um, that, the best thing to do is understand what you're going to do first um, and then go out and look at what technologies um, solve that problem. Um, because if you try to look at hot new technology and apply it to like every working on, you may hit um, the kind of thing about where it says you do everything, then you adopt it and start is that yes, maybe it doesn't do everything. Um, and that, um, that certain technologies are really good at and other things that other other technologies are good at as well. So really understanding what you're trying to do um, and and kind of uh, the, the way that you want it to happen 
um, first and then looking for uh, of the infinite number of tools out there, uh, the one that works best. Oh, that's great. And um, thank you. That's uh, um, a, probably a very good segue to, to um, uh, reminding everyone here that uh, coming to these conferences uh, is, is, of course, a fantastic way to keep up to date with the industry, um, connect with people like yourselves. Um, uh, Alan Newton, I, I think you're, um, you're, you're available for anybody who might want to have other Absolutely. contacts, yeah. reach out to you. But Twitter yeah. handle, you've got you know LinkedIn yeah. profiles. Um, and, of course, people wouldn't be able to be here learning about this stuff if it wasn't for the support from um, uh, from IBM uh, and our other sponsors that actually make this all available to everybody. So um, we thank you all. We thank you all for your continued time and support. Um, Newton, for your patience with the technology, you may not even be able to hear me now. Um, and thank you to everybody who joined us for this session. Thanks. I'll translate for Newton on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, Newton. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care, everybody. Take care. Yep. Thank Bye. you.